In the beginning there was darkness. Four gods woke from the ether and created the universe, world, and land. Of the four gods, one became the most respected among Hawaii's ali'i, warriors, and King Kamehameha the Great. The god was the Hawaiian god of war, Ku. And this is Legends from the Pacific. Aloha, and thank you for joining us. This is Legends from the Pacific, episode 102, the Hawaiian god of war, Ku. I am Kamuela Kaneshiro, a native Hawaiian professional writer, speaker, and Comic-Con panelist with extensive film and television experience. I study mythology, I've encountered unusual things, and I'm a geek. You can support us by getting two or three of your friends to listen to our show. This simple request goes a long way in helping us grow our show. And a big mahalo nui loa to our Patreon members, whose support keeps our show going. Later in this episode, your featured song and Hawaiian word, but first, let me share with you Ku. This episode refers to our previous episodes about Kamehameha, Lono, and Ka'ahumanu. Please consider listening to them if you haven't already, so you may have a deeper appreciation of this episode. Ku, like Lono, is one of Hawaii's four major gods, who existed before creation. Ku has many names, but one of his more popular ones is Ku Ka'ili Moku, or the Land Snatcher. Ku is connected with forests, the ocean, and fishers. While I've mentioned Hawaiian gods and goddesses affiliated with the land, ocean, and fishers, Ku is their chief god. He is married to the goddess Hina. However, while I spoke previously about Hina, the moon goddess, and Maui's mother, conflicting material implies these may be different Hinas or even Hina in another form. Things are further complicated since Hina is a very common name in Hawaiian mythology. That being said, something that is certain is the demigod Maui is not Ku's son. Ku was paired with Hina because he represents masculinity and the day while Hina represents femininity and the night. Ku was also the only god who accepted human sacrifice. Now, there are two seasons in Hawaii, but they are not equal. As stated in our Lono episode, Lono's time was during the Makahiki season, the time of celebration and peace, which lasted about four months. The rest of the year was Ku's, the time when fighting and wars were permitted. Since Ku was associated with strength, war, and battles, Ali'i and warriors worshipped him to gain his favor for successful battles. Possibly Ku's most famous follower was Kamehameha the Great, who made statues of him during his campaign to unite all the islands. But while Ku was the god of war, he also provided for Hawaiians. In ancient Hawaii, Ku took mortal form and lived among the Hawaiians as a planter. He fell in love with a young woman. They married and had a family, but a famine coursed through the islands. Soon, fishing provided little. Hawaiians weakened and began starving. Ku knew what he needed to do, but it means sacrificing his happiness. He told his wife. She begged him not to go but he couldn't bear her thin face and their malnourished children. He kissed them and begged they'd forgive him. He went outside and dug his feet into the ground. Dirt covered his toes, consumed his ankles. Then the ground devoured him as his family cried. Days later, a sprout surfaced where he sank. It grew quickly and an unusual fruit blossomed. Ku's wife heard him tell her to roast the fruit, remove the skin, and eat. They did, and it filled them. The fruit was shared by Ku's family, and it saved the Hawaiians. (laughs) 
So, ulu or breadfruit was the plant that saved the Hawaiians. Ulu is a superfood like taro and coconuts. It can be eaten anytime. When unripe, it tastes similar to a potato. When ripened, it becomes custard like. Ulu was also called the canoe plant because the bark and light wood were ideal for canoes and surfboards, since koa wood was strong but heavy. The sap was used as glue or caulking to create a waterproof seal. While its leaves alleviated things like skin infections, asthma, and toothaches. So, where did ulu actually come from? The plant is native to New Guinea, and the Hawaiians brought it to Hawaii around 300 CE. That's more than a millennium before Europe's seafaring age of discovery. Today, ulu is still enjoyed, but it is not as popular as coconut or taro. Few places have dishes with ulu. But there are recipes and events that feature it. As for ku, after Kamehameha the Great died, Hawaii's kapu system was abolished, along with the old gods. I always liked ku because of his tiki appearance, which is probably the most commonly used tiki image. Alright, I'm going to share an embarrassing childhood experience with you. Around the time I was learning my heritage, I was playing basketball. Team pitchers came up and I decided to mimic Ku's gaping mouth. What I didn't know was I looked like I was crying. The photographer was aware of this and told my coaches, but they did little to correct my expression. Honestly, I was a kid that didn't know what I was doing. So my coaches punished me, which I still feel was very harsh, since all they had to do was tell me to stop it. But now that expression and hakas are performed by college and professional athletes. My family would say I'm ahead of my time, but I still feel embarrassed. For the record, my team won first place. Coincidence? I'll leave that up for you to decide. If you like what you heard, please give us a rating and write a review. I'd really appreciate it. A big mahalo nui loa to our newest Patreon member, Meg. Thank you very much, Meg, for becoming a Legends from the Pacific Patreon member. You too can be a Patreon member like Meg, Jessica Bullock, Edward Pueo Henke, Cassie, Felisa H., The Makuli Guy, and of course, Ren Shepard. Just click the link in our show notes to enjoy our Patreon-exclusive stories and other nifty benefits. I surprised everyone last year with t-shirts. So become a Legends from the Pacific Patreon supporter today. Our theme song is Mystery by Tavana, courtesy of High Sessions. Sound effects are by Sound Effects Factory. Our music coordinator is Matt Duffy, a.k.a. DJ Triple Bypass. Links and show notes can be found on our website, legendsfromthepacific.com, including a link to your featured song, which is My Sweet Peacocky Lay by Robert Casimero, courtesy of High Sessions. Legends from the Pacific was written, produced, and edited by me, Kamuala Kaneshiro. I also wrote our original stories. Your featured Hawaiian word is kawa. Kawa means war. An example of kawa is the 13th Marvel film was Captain America Civil Kawa. Once again, kawa is Hawaiian for war. It was also the Marvel Cinematic Universe debut of Spider-Man. Thank you once again for listening. Mahalo and a hui ho! Pilipa'a mon.